Hi everyone, and this is my quick screencast on Stellarium version 10.3. One of the best benefits of this product is its ability to interface with a telescope. I tested this out just last week with the Mead ETX LS ACF and it worked flawlessly. Setup and installation are very straightforward. Now, first, before you go ahead and you install Stellarium and try to control the telescope with it, you want to install the drivers and the software that came with your particular telescope. In my case, it was the AutoStar Suite. Really won't go into the installation of the AutoStar Suite. It's extremely uh, easy to do. You just want to go through the installation and make sure that you download the AutoStar Suite and include the drivers for your telescope. Very, very important. Once you have that done, then you can go ahead and download Stellarium. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what Stellarium is, Stellarium is a free product. You can go to stellarium.org to download it. Again, it's very easy to download and install. Once you have Stellarium installed, next thing that you want to do is go ahead and make some configuration changes to the, pro to the program. Now, First, let me change this from night mode to regular mode. And the first thing that you want to do is set your location. It has a very, very good database of major cities across the world. I was very easily able to find Nashville, Tennessee, the closest major city to me. Once you have that chosen, go ahead and choose set as default and close your window. Next time you open up Stellarium, you should be able to have your standard location now saved in the system. The next thing that you want to do is start to download the extra database objects. Now Stellarium has a built-in um, database of, of I believe 200,000 objects but what you want to do is increase that just so that you have the peace of mind to where you can choose a variety of objects since you're going to be using this now with a telescope. You would go to the configuration window over here. You can use F2 if you wish. And go to tools. Now I have already downloaded all nine catalogs. So this window looks a little bit different in mine than it will for yours. However, you will simply see um, catalogs available to download. Perhaps it will give you a number such as 9 of 9 or 7 of 9, etc. You merely will go ahead and choose connect or download here and let it download and install those additional catalogs. You do need to do it one by one. So check back to this window here periodically. You don't have to leave this window up. You do have to leave the product running, I believe. You can navigate through and do some different things while it's downloading the catalog, but get them all so that your catalog and star catalog are completely up to date. Once you do that, now you can go ahead and choose your telescope. Here on the configuration page, you will go to plugins. Now you have a number of plugins here. We really won't focus too much on the others, but we're going to go to telescope control since that's the main purpose of this webcast. Once you have the telescope control highlighted, you will click load at startup and go ahead and choose configure. Now I have my telescope already entered in here, but it's very easy to set up. You will go ahead and choose add in this case since I'm already in there. I'll go ahead and choose configure. Now we are going to communicate to the telescope directly through the serial port. Now with my particular telescope, it's a USB. Uh, but the wording here is really interchangeable. Um, most new telescopes today don't have a serial port. They will have USB. It really depends on your particular telescope, so you might want to double check that. For mine, serial port is the same as USB. I type in the name of the ETX or the actually I can name it whatever I want here I named it the actual model that I have you may choose to start this up at startup I chose not to do that I just prefer to start it manually and you need to choose what COM port in my particular case again realizing that serial ports are very different than USB ports 
for this particular software product they're really using that term interchangeably and serial port com4 I know from installing my software before with uh, the Mead software uh, AutoStar suite it uh, had installed it as a com port communications and that's the one that I'm choosing and of course your device model here with the drop down you have the different software um, protocols that it supports and in this one it's and for mine for the Mead ETX LS a Mead LX200 compatible worked just fine you might want to double check what emulation you need to use there and that's really it uh, everything else was um, was pretty much the defaults I didn't mess with any of these other parameters once you're done you can you can click OK now I unfortunately don't have this set up to the telescope at the moment uh, but I will say again that this worked flawlessly when I was out in the field once you go to your telescope controls here um, you want to ensure that you downloaded the drivers as I directed before you want to go ahead and then in connect the computer via USB to the computer make sure that the Windows recognizes the the, uh, the hardware of the telescope and once that is confirmed you will click start what will happen here is wherever your uh, telescope was left off for instance if your telescope was pointed at Saturn here you will also have a circular reticle with ETX LS or remember that's simply what I named the telescope so yours could be something completely different here on Saturn noting that Stellarium knows where your telescope is pointed now what we can do is go find a variety of objects of our choosing now just for the purpose of this webcast I'm going to show I'm going to expand the visible objects here by clicking on the sky and viewing objects and expanding my nebula or deep sky objects a little bit further out than what would normally be preferred to be viewed just so that I have a whole bunch of objects that I can now choose to so for instance if I wanted to go from Saturn to M53 I will merely left click on M53 and I will press control 1 on the keyboard and my telescope will now slew to M53 and you will see it moving here with that red circular reticle as I pointed out earlier now I don't know if there's a keyboard shortcut yet um, to that but you will see here uh, move telescope I believe mine was zero you could try zero or zero one um, I believe one worked for me and that's what controlled the movement of my telescope and that's it uh, you can literally zoom in to other objects here and choose the objects and control 0 or control 1 and your telescope will go ahead and move to those and these these other NGC's same thing even the stars are selected now so you can just choose your object and move your telescope it's really really fun to use a computerized telescope in this way because you just get to explore around the areas uh, areas of the night sky and you don't have to know you know the 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 number keypad uh, or the you know the NGC or the uh, Messier number you can just zoom in and whatever looks interesting click on and uh, go to Delarium to work and I'm thrilled that it is working with the computer interface and that's it that is uh, Stellarium version 0 0.10.3 interfacing with a computer controlled telescope such as the Mead ETX LS.